Welcome to the very first episode of the Retro Wolf 88 podcast. For right now, I'm just calling it the Retro Wolf cast. I don't have an official name for it yet. Um, I'll have to come up with something good. Maybe those of you that are listening, maybe you can submit some ideas in the comments. In the very first episode of the Retro Wolf cast, we are joined by a very awesome guest, Leon Harris, also known as SFX Leon, because he is a special effects technician. Leon, how you doing today, man? I'm good. I'm good. Good to be here. <laughs> well, I appreciate you joining the podcast, man. So before we jump into the interview proper, uh, what have you been up to lately, man? And what, what games have you been playing recently? Oh, well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I actually finally got um, Mario Baseball on, mm. uh, on the GameCube, which is quite a rare game in in the uk I, I don't know if it is out there but over here obviously we, we don't have baseball so right it, it was one of those sports games I always wanted but it, it's usually pretty pricey and uh mm. i finally got it for moderately cheap the other day so i've not actually tried it out yet though so it may, nice. it may be rubbish <laughs> yeah i mean i've i've heard it's pretty decent now here in the states it's um it's not a rare game it's not a super common game i would say it's sort of uncommon just simply because it's a mario game you know and most people have it and don't want to let go of it but uh i've never played it so you'll have to let me know what you think about it yeah yeah i'm definitely going to give it a go just um when, when i can actually get around to it it's got, i've got so many consoles to try and plug in and sort mm. out so <laughs> yeah been playing anything else lately besides that uh streets of rage 4 obviously um i've nice. not finished it but it's it's a fun game uh really enjoyed it uh and i guess last week final fantasy 7 remake nice and, and how did you feel about that game uh polarizing ending which i'm sure that mm -hmm. is going around everywhere that uh yeah. that, pe that people are a bit not quite sure how to take it yeah uh i've i've gone past the the utter outrage that i had when, when i first played it <laughs> to sort of accepting it a bit now and nice i'm, I'm looking forward to what what will come up rather than thinking mm -hmm. oh they're not good they're not going to put my favorite bits in because they've completely changed it gotcha gotcha yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pick that one up eventually but it's not really at the top of my list right now um what i've been playing le recently i have been playing axiom verge for the first time which is a really good game um, have you have you ever played axiom verge i've i've got it but i i haven't actually uh played it i think i've had it for about a year or two mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like but yeah. um yeah I've, i think i've got it on the switch yep same here yeah but i've, I've not got around to playing it yet I, I don't really play my switch to be honest mm -hmm. fantastic game man it's a, a really good metroidvania very difficult i'm enjoying it quite a bit uh, I also just recently beat uh, James Bond 007 Agent Under Fire and James Bond 007 Nightfire on the GameCube for a video, and now I'm playing uh, Beyond Good and Evil over again on the GameCube for a, another video coming up in a few weeks. So can a I lot ask, of GameCube stuff. Can I ask, did you finish um, did, did you finish Deadly Premonition? No, not yet. I think I'm going to strictly play that on stream uh, and finish it on the live stream just because people seem to be enjoying it. Oh yeah, it was an interesting game. So it, yeah. e even like, I mean, I was tuning in obviously really late because mm -hmm. obviously the time difference. Yeah. But uh, I, I was happy to watch it. It was it, it was a cool yeah. stream, and it, and it actually yeah. made me want it because I own it myself. Mm -hmm. So I was I was actually tempted to play it myself. Yeah, I'm liking it so far, man. It's like a, it's just like the video game equivalent of a really shitty B movie. So what's not to love about that? I, I kind of got like a, a like a crappy sort of vibe from it um, mm -hmm. of uh oh god what's that game called it'll probably come to you later it, too yeah it's gonna annoy the hell out of me if i don't remember it but it's um it it, it was like resident evil but it's like mm -hmm. a set, set in a psychiatric hospital at the start and then you then you come out and uh it and it, it did get a sequel as well is it um it's not that game based off it's not like based off that game that came out recently based off the cthulhu no stories no, it's. Uh, I'm gonna have to Google it because otherwise it's gonna annoy the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, Evil Within. Oh, Evil Within. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. played Evil Within. I never it beat like, it, but I did play it. I, I I played like the first couple of chapters mm -hmm. of the first one. I I mm -hmm. own both of them, but I just haven't got around to them. But it yeah. looked like a crappier version of yeah. that, and yeah. not quite as good version of Alan Wake. You know? Yep. It's still a fun though. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that vibe as well. All right, man, we're going to jump right into the interview now. So why don't you start with telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do for a living? 
Okay, uh, well, I'm a special effects technician. Uh, I mainly work on uh, movies and TV shows, though in the past I have done commercials and, uh, and music videos. But um, yeah, it's basically uh, physical effects, so n none, none of your computer stuff. I'm on set, mm -hmm. and special effects these days is more a blanket term for atmospheric effects. So we're the guys that we're basically controlling the weather or almost all the elements, you know, so like uh, your wind effects, your rain um, and various water effects, fire, smoke and uh, occasionally pyrotechnics and stuff. I mean, we, 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 we do other stuff as well. I mean, there's, there's uh, an element of engineering and stuff like that, but um, it, it's kind of shied away over the years of, of what the what the industry used to be for physical special effects, whereas mm -hmm. back in the day it could have been model making and makeup right. and all sorts of things, whereas now they're they're kind of separate. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm curious, how did you get into doing that? How did you get into special effects? Did it is it just something that sort of happened, or is it something you actually were working towards getting into? Oh, it, it was definitely an accident. Um, mm -hmm. I... I kind of uh, just just went to into back into education to just have something to do. Really, I, I wasn't really aware of what what my sort of goal in life was as such. I was young. I was happy to do, you know, just just go out mm -hmm. do the drinking and uh, and just have the generic job. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I ended up going to university, and through that, um, I wound. Uh, I, I actually studied special effects at university. Uh, though the course was irrelevant to what I was actually doing. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it was more of a blanket term for a movie course. So they were teaching mm -hmm. you how to do cameras and stuff like that, which didn't interest me terribly. Um, but while I was up there, I, I kind of uh, bumped into a guy and got talking, ended up doing music videos. Um, uh, so I did like, you know, some, some special effects, like a little bit of smoke here and there, uh, made some... <laughs> made made the crappiest pair of animatronic wing rigs uh for for a music video out of um plastic card and uh <laughs> and 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 just and just like made my own little servos yeah. out of plastic card and fishing wire and stuff like that it's nice. like me, me, me and my friend made it and it's like it it, it did the job it looked mm -hmm. it i wouldn't say it looked great but it, it did the job it went in the video and uh you know to, <laughs> towards the end it it died a death but um you know, it was it was only meant to last a day, so it was mm -hmm. fine. But again, through that, it, it was a knock-on effect. I, I ended up speaking to people through that. That I then went mm -hmm. on to do uh, Captain America, uh, the the original one, back in mm -hmm. uh, in Manchester at the time. Um, and through that, got speaking to more people, which had a knock-on effect to me. Then working on uh, a live episode of Coronation Street, to then going down to meet my uh, first like big-time boss, which was Joss Williams. Mm -hmm. um and he took me on to do dark shadows uh the first tim burton film nice and uh and basically i, I just went from there that that was like right well i'm doing special effects then and i've i've never looked back really that's that's been my job for the last 10 years almost so how long have you been doing special effects now uh i believe around 10 years i think uh i mean my, my first film was uh two early 2011 mm -hmm. but before that i was doing music videos fireworks shows um commercials and a couple of tv shows not, not nothing major but I'd, I'd say about 10 years but but in actual films nine years that's that's a fair bit of experience man so it's no wonder why you're getting some pretty big gigs these days uh well yeah it's 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 always the same you, you you're as good as your last job so yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. you go you go on to the job you do your utmost best you give 100 percent Mm -hmm. And you, you'll get called back, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I keep getting work, so I must be doing something right. So, so is that is that how it works basically? So you you're not actually going out looking for the jobs. The jobs come to you, or is it a combination of the two? I I, I don't really call up too much. Mm -hmm. Um, basically, because it is how it is how the industry works. I mean, mm -hmm. you you get you get jobs through reputation or from knowing knowing somebody that knows you're free or stuff like that mm -hmm. you know so it's uh I'm not, I'm not sure if it's the same in the states but in mm -hmm. the in the uk it's uh it's, it's a relatively close-knit industry so I, I would get a call um 
and if I'm not on something, then yeah, I'll, I'll take the job. And it could be like, oh, we need you tomorrow for a six month job. And then it'd be like, mm-hmm. right, okay. So I've always got to be ready to pack my stuff and go away, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, back, back when I first started out, I was obviously calling quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but one, once you start working, usually if they've got another job up, they'll be like, I oh, will give you a call. And then you sort of, it, it's, it's good to keep your options open, but mm-hmm. it, you don't want to accept a job and then another job come up that, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe you want the other job more, yeah. but you've, you've got to be loyal. Uh, yeah. Cause if, if you, if you then turn around to that other, the, the one you've already said yes to and mm-hmm. say, Oh, I've got a better offer. You're yeah. never going to work for that person again. So I, yeah. I try, I, I try my absolute best to, uh, mm-hmm. to, you know, get, get, get a job coming in mm-hmm. and, and stick to what I do. So, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, you don't want to burn any bridges or anything like that. You keep a good reputation. And Absolutely. You, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so has that ever happened where you're where you're in the middle of a job and you get another offer and you unfortunately can't take it because of the job you're currently on? All the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, I remember I was on when I was on Justice League, I, mm-hmm. I hadn't worked in about six months because mm-hmm. um, because normally I'd, I'll, I'll do like uh a few months of work, have a month off, and another couple of months, other month off. But mm-hmm. for the previous year, I I'd, I'd done uh, like nine months in a row, mm-hmm. so so I took a good six months off. Um, not not necessarily out of necessity. I mean, if someone did call and and was like, "Oh, we need you for this long job," I probably would have taken it. But I didn't mm-hmm. actively uh, seek out anything in that time. Yeah. But when, when I when I did get the call for Justice League, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll I'll, I'll jump on that. It was a it was a nice long job. Uh, it was a mm-hmm. pretty good job to work on. Yeah. But I got called maybe three or four times on that job with people asking me on other shows. I got I, I got called up for Aladdin. I got called up for um, what else was it? I think I think possibly Peaky Blinders or something. I, I, but but again, I, I was I was already on Justice League, so it's like, sorry, I I can't, you know. Uh, I was, hey, I was happy where I was. <laughs> hey, that's, I mean, that's, I guess that's a good problem to have. The jobs, you know, they keep coming in, so. Yeah, it's, it, obviously you, you want to try and be as available as you can mm-hmm. um, f- for your own work. Yeah, uh, right. It's like, but uh, I, I have had it before where I, I seem to be always working when one particular person used to call mm-hmm. me up. And they've stopped calling now because I'm always working. So, it's like, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, you, you can upset people without yeah. meaning to. Yeah. Right, right, right. I got you. So, you know, obviously COVID-19 is a big problem all around the world. It's affecting a lot of different things all, all over the planet. Um, how has it affected you personally with what you do for a living? And then I have a follow-up question to that after you answer that. Oh, well, I, I, was, I was meant to be uh, jumping on. On a on on something back in mid March, mm-hmm. and uh, it it got shut down. I mean, mm-hmm. ev- everything everything uh, the whole UK film industry is is uh, closed at the moment. Wow. Um. So yeah, no, no, nothing is in production as as far as I'm aware. Mm-hmm. Um. I I speak to people obviously in the industry now and then, and uh, just just keep your ear to the ground, see see what's going on. Yeah. But as 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 far as I know, everything is currently down at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So kind of to follow up on that, uh, what sort of, since you're in the industry and you kind of know it a little bit better than somebody like me, that's not in the industry, what sort of long-term effects do you see this virus having on Hollywood, the film industry in general, the future of movies and TV, that sort of thing? Uh, well, it's, it's going to be interesting because I mean, having to keep social distance when you, when you're on a set, mm. uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, yeah. I mean, not necessarily from a special effects point of view, but from where I see, like that, there'll, there'll be three people on a camera because you've got the grips pushing the dolly, and you'll like, you'll mm. sometimes have the uh, the AC on there as well as well as the the operator, and yeah. they'll, they'll be going along. So that's three people right next to each other already, mm-hmm. and um, and and obviously you've got actors, um, you've got costume that will come in and adjust mm-hmm. adjust actors stuff. They'll do the hair, uh, like uh, the, not not the costume, but other other departments will come in. They'll do hair, they'll do makeup. So it's 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 a very uh, close knit sort of industry. You you mm-hmm. you kind of you, you kind of do get quite close to to your workers. Um, mm-hmm. 
so I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how and what precautions we'll, we'll, we will have to take um, in, in regards to the prospective new rules we may see. So. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's definitely going to be very interesting. One thing that I think is going to happen, just my personal prediction, is I think this virus is going to be the beginning of the end for movie theaters. It may take a while, but I think movie theaters are going to slowly become uh, a rare commodity, kind of like how drive-in movie theaters are rare these days. I think regular movie theaters are going to become rare like that because of the digital age. And I think with this virus going on, some of these major uh, movie production companies are starting to see, hey, we can make just as much money by selling people our money, I mean, our movie digitally online for them to watch instead of putting it in a movie theater. So, I, I, again, I'm not an expert, and I don't know if I may be completely wrong, and it may not happen, but I, I just feel like movie theaters are going to take a really big hit on this in both the short term and the long term. What do you think about that? Uh, well, I think I think there's a decline of the cinema um, mm-hmm. as, as, as been apparent in, in the UK at least for, for a number of years. Um, yeah. Like when, when I do go to go to a, uh, watch a film, um, it's not usually packed. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm not from the biggest town in, uh, in, in, in the country, but mm-hmm. uh, it's I've definitely not seen anything um, like back in the heyday because I, I used to work in a cinema uh, many years ago. And we, we'd get films in, and and it would be, I don't know, six screenings a day, a mm-hmm. uh, couple of hundred seats, and they would be full in every screen, wow. and yeah. like like ten screens, so you'd have mm-hmm. thousands of people. Um, but now it, it I, I don't know, I, I I guess maybe the the online subscriptions of your mm-hmm. your Netflix, your your Amazon Prime, your yeah, mm-hmm. you guys have like Hulu and stuff like that, don't yep. you? you? You have you have a lot more out there than we do. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we've only, we've only got a few real dedicated ones here. But yeah. they have become more prevalent um, in 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 the current age, really. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you could be right. You could you could definitely be right. I guess we'll find out in time. Mm. It'll be it will be interesting to uh, to see it happen. I mean, kind of sad too because I do like movie theaters, but I mean that's just what happens with with entertainment and technology. Things change and they evolve, and just part of it. Um, so give us a, a quick and brief rundown of some of the biggest movies and shows you've worked on and, and which ones have been some of your favorites to work on? Uh, well, off the, t- off the top of my head, probably the biggest, the biggest show, show is obviously game of Thrones. Um, right. I, I'm not going to be able to top that for, for <laughs> definitely for a <laughs> while of, yeah. uh, of, of how many people actually did tune into that show. Uh, I, I did season four and season eight, uh, and then after after that, I mean, I've I've got Justice League. That that mm-hmm. was uh, that was a big UK film. Um, uh, the, the the new Kingsman, um, mm-hmm. which is the prequel. I, I believe the trailer's out. The film's not actually out yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe it was meant to be, but it's been delayed. Mm-hmm. Um, but that 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 was that was definitely a fun one to work on. Um, mm-hmm. There's there's some of some of our stuff in the trailer, uh, which I, I won't point out, but. You'll probably be able to tell if if you do yeah. watch the Kingsman trailer. Yeah. Um, Conjuring Two was a fun one to work on. Um, uh, I, I haven't really dabbled in working on many horrors. Uh, mm. It's just op- opportunity, you know. So it's, mm-hmm. it's it's not the the biggest genre that gets filmed over here, um, at least on the budgets that um, that that usually come into the studios where I work. Um, but that that was definitely a fun one to work on. Uh, back in well, back in my early days, Fast and Furious Six. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was quite a big one at the time. Um, uh, I, I wasn't actually on set for that film, um, which which is unusual for me. It's it's uh, uh, but when when I was starting out, I was in the workshop um, with with the proper engineers. I mean, I, I would mm-hmm. I wouldn't consider myself an engineer at all. Um, mm-hmm. That there's some really technical people that work in our workshops. Uh, but I, I was assisting them, helping build the Antonov and uh, cut apart the uh, the Chieftain tank that we had on set for for the film. Mm. Mm. Um, so it, it, it's lots of metal, metal cutting, uh, measuring, yeah. um, like bring, bringing in all, all, your, all your stuff like that. A little bit of welding here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the, there's there's guys that are a, a lot better suited to it than than I am, and I think that's why I sort of like moved away and went went mm-hmm. on to work on set. Yeah. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. What about, uh, I see you're wearing your Fantastic Beasts shirt. I assume you worked on that movie as well? Uh, I, I worked on the reshoots. Uh, oh, okay. I, I, yeah, I, I, I just went to, to the reshoots and uh, we, we did some bits um, be- before the film, obviously before the film got released. Um, mm-hmm. But so, some, sometimes a, a film will uh, require, whether it be a couple of weeks shooting mm-hmm. again or they did, they missed a particular scene or, or if they just want to reshoot a whole lot, which actually happened on Justice League. Um, mm, yeah. I, th- I think, uh, I, I, I don't believe I'm actually credited on that film. Because I I worked on Justice League when it was uh, Zack Snyder and uh, mm-hmm. we we obviously did the film finished the film, um, mm-hmm. but they uh, that they, they did some reshoots with Joss Whedon I believe, oh, and yeah. uh, I I wasn't back there for that. So I would imagine in in your line of work you have to travel to other countries quite a bit. Um, what country has been the coolest and, and most memorable so far that you've had to travel to? Um. Well, I, I really enjoyed Croatia. Mm-hmm. Um, I was uh, it, I, I went to both the the south um, first when we when we were filming down there mm-hmm. uh, in an area called Split, I think it was, um, which was it, it was just, it was just a crazy sort of area. Mm-hmm. It was um, it was it was quite dilapidated, but also mm-hmm. a tourist resort. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I mean, Croatia isn't isn't the richest country in in Europe right. by by far. But uh, it, it really was um, sort of untouched countryside. I've got I've got some great pictures of like some mountains with like your your your, uh, your lakes and your seas and mm-hmm. that going past. And it's just and it, it was really picturesque uh, because I I took a lot of pictures because most most of our uh, our filming mm-hmm. was maybe two hours away by car. Mm-hmm. So, so we'd we'd get taken in by the driver in the morning, and then um and then we'd do what do our day, and then get taken back as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we went up north, and I, I was in uh, a lovely hotel up there, um, and and that area was a a lot more beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was get just getting into season at that point, I believe. So, um, warm country, uh, a mm-hmm. lot of scantily clad uh, people around. Um, yeah. You know, you can't knock nice. that when, you, when you're going into work. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> have you ever uh, have you ever worked in an area where you felt unsafe, like kind of a rough area? Um, the first time I went out to Game of Thrones season four, mm-hmm. so this is going back 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to have uh, various bomb threats. Oh wow! Um, which would which would happen uh, maybe a couple of times a week. I mean, we, we'd uh, we 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 would be on our on our way to work, mm-hmm. um, and basically our, our driver would have to take a detour, and maybe we'd be like ten minutes late getting getting in or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But nothing was really well. Nothing was filmed in the centre mm-hmm. of uh, of of the area, so we we were usually a couple of hours away. It was mm-hmm. just more we we had to avoid where where the the threat has apparently come from. I see. Uh, um, but other than that, I can't think of anything too extreme mm-hmm. that, that I can think of off the top of my head. What location was that? That's uh, Belfast. Oh, okay, Belfast, Nor- Northern Ireland. Yeah, season, season eight though, it was absolutely yeah. fine. You know, there was not, yeah. it, it. It's amazing how it changed over five years. Yeah. You know? um, and I I I love Belfast. I, I thought it was a great city. Nice. So the next question is, uh, what is the most insane special effect that you've been a part of? Uh, I would have to say Game of Thrones Season 8, without a doubt. Uh, we had to set 23 people on fire at the same time, uh, which was a world record I believe we currently still hold. Um, but yeah, that, that that was just something crazy. It was like, well, mm. we're setting 23 people on fire at the same time today. So, oh, wow. <laughs> this wow. will be fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and you know it was great. We 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 did it twice, and uh, I've 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 seen pictures. Obviously, I watched it as well, but uh, but I've I've seen some pictures from set, and yeah, it 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 looked good. I'm I'm very proud of that, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Very cool, man. Very cool. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine what that's like doing that. That's got to be. I would imagine that's a very um, delicate process where everybody has to be on their a game to make sure that they do everything perfectly right and that way you know because i mean it's a safety concern obviously you got to be ready to put out the fires i would imagine quickly and things like that so um that sounds like it's it's more i what i'm trying to say is i would imagine it's more complicated to do that than it sounds 
Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. I mean, um, when when you're putting someone's safety in your hands, then you, everybody has to be on their A game. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we we went through it a number of times. It, it wasn't just a oh we're going to do this now. Mm-hmm. It was literally hours of setting up, mm-hmm. practicing, make uh, like deciding what was going to happen, who was going to do mm-hmm. what. You know, ev- everybody had their their goals of what they had to do um, mm-hmm. to to get this perfect. And it had yep. to be perfect, and, uh, gotcha. and yeah, and we got it. We got it absolutely fine. It was uh, it was uh, very very cool. Um, so you so you as you've already touched on, you worked on several episodes of Game of Thrones. Is there anything that you can tell us about that experience? I realize there's a lot of things you can't talk about, and that you may need to be vague. But but what about that experience? Can you tell us about or share with us? Uh, well, <laughs> I can say it was a great crew to work with. I mean, mm-hmm. um. And the locations in Ireland, they they always tend to be cold, uh, mm. very wet, which isn't ideal, but it sets right. up the mood for a lot of the show, I guess. Yeah. Um, but actually, living in Ireland was was perfect as well. So you know, I, I had no issue being in in uh, in Northern Ireland uh, to live there for for the period of time I was out there mm. filming. But talking about the show as such, obviously, obviously, I can't really divulge too much right um even after it's been out for for many years just Mm -hmm. just for uh yeah for for fear of um being being struck off or or whatever you know it's like you you, you don't want to start talking about things that happen when Mm -hmm. when you've signed ndas yeah no i get it i get it totally understand um so kind of to touch back on some of some stuff we've already talked about how what's it like you know, traveling so much and, and living in other parts of the world away from your home for extended periods of time. Do you ever have a difficult time adjusting to that? Or do you ever get homesick while you're out for months at a time working on a movie or a show? Uh, yeah, you can do. But, I mean, we, we work so many hours that you, you tend to not really think about it too much. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we don't have a lot of downtime. I mean, sometimes we we will tend to work... 10 to 12 hours uh, a day on set and wow. that doesn't usually include you you could have a pre-call so you could go mm. in for an hour to set something up or mm. or longer if it's a particularly large effect that we are doing for the first shot um and then at the end of the day it may be an hour to to put it all back mm-hmm. um so so make sure you can't leave like uh mm. a- equipment outside mm-hmm. um so so we put all that stuff away um and then you've got travel time as well. I mean, if you're not mm-hmm. at the studio, you may be going to a location. So you've then got your travel time into it, which could be an hour there, an hour there. I mean, that's 16 hours. And then, you know, you're into your next mm-hmm. day and you could be doing six days a week. Yeah. So, so basically, basically, you don't, it sounds like you don't have much time to think about it. You're just working, working, working. Yeah. I mean, the, the, obviously, there's been times where, where I've just been like, I'd really love to go home when I'm halfway through a six month job or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Right. But, but yeah. Yeah, you, you just—it's—it's it's what what my job is. I I I made peace with it a long time ago, and mm-hmm. it's, I'm just happy to do it. You know. Yeah. No, it seems like I mean, it seems really cool. If I had the skills and the connections, I would do it in a heartbeat. That seems like uh, a really fun thing to do. Um, so we've had a lot of we had a lot of conversations, me and you, on the set of the Game Chasers movie. And a lot of times we would talk about a movie that you'd work on and you had mentioned that you had not actually seen the movie that you work on. For example, Annihilation. So I'm just curious, what makes you decide to not watch a movie you had worked on? Is it simply that it's just not a movie that you're <clears throat> interested in or is it something else? No, I, I mean, I, I enjoy movies as much as the next person, but mm-hmm. I, I guess sometimes working working on something can sometimes spoil the show or ah uh, yeah i know so sometimes it may just be a concept that i'm not personally interested in mm-hmm. um yeah but I, I mean if it's something that i that i'm already invested in or or it's something that i i would in i think i would enjoy watching whilst i'm there then mm-hmm. sure I'd, I'd i'll i'll give mm-hmm. it a go but there's a lot of movies being made these days, you know. Oh yeah, you can't, can't oh, watch all of them. <laughs> yeah, you are right about that. You are definitely right about it, especially for people like me and you that are gamers, because we're also trying to play video games too. So it's hard to kind of balance the time between sure. all these forms of entertainment. So I get it. All right. So uh, if you could go back in time and work on any movie or TV show, this hypothetical question, what would you pick? And you can pick a few different ones if you want to. I'd have to go back to the '80s. 
definitely. Well, 80s, 90s. Because, mm -hmm. um, I mean, 80s, you, you had a lot of practical effects going on back then. I mean, visual effects hadn't really come into the industry. It, well, it was very late 90s, very, very sort of mm -hmm. briefly. And then it yeah. sort of had a had a had a big big boom in the nineties, but back in the eighties you had like I don't know Back to the Future for instance, yeah. the, the, yeah. the, that trilogy was just fantastic. I mean, oh, yeah. even to work on one of them would have been amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm a bit polarizing because I say that the second one is my favorite, but I think it's the most interesting to mm -hmm. me. Um, yeah. I guess because of the future aspect and stuff like that, I I just found it very interesting yeah. at the time. Same here. And um, it, yeah, that that that's something I would have liked to have worked on. Or, for instance, Terminator Two, uh, yes. iconic film, iconic mm -hmm. film. And just just watching it, and and I mean, I I know that film inside and out, and just mm -hmm. just watching it and being able to know what the effects are, mm -hmm. but also it, it being pretty seamless, and you can't really mm -hmm. tell. I mean, I, I yeah. I'm usually there watching it, and I'm like, oh, I know how that's done, mm -hmm. but it still looks great. Oh yeah, and that's, and that's back in the early nineties, so yeah. you know, it's fantastic. Yeah. So the, 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 those would probably be my top two choices. I mean, obviously, I'd love to do something like Ghostbusters or yeah, yeah, you know, you know uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So there's some yes. great films, great films mm -hmm. that, uh, that back in the day that that would have been fantastic to work on. I'm sure. You just listed some of my favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Terminator Two. I I will argue with anybody that Terminator Two is one of the best action films ever made. Period. Oh, without a doubt. Yep. Uh, to, to be honest, I actually watched uh, Dark Fate um, relatively recently. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not a terrible uh, yeah. direct sequel. It, it's yeah. it's okay. It's not bad. Yeah, um, yeah I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of the other um, Terminator mm -hmm. films that followed after two. Yeah. But Dark Fate as as a direct sequel, ignoring those, mm -hmm. it, it worked. I I, yeah. I enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. it's, it it will never stand up to two. But no. what will? Right, exactly. Yeah, no, I enjoyed Dark Fate as well. I watched it about a, I want to say about a month ago, and I, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I, it, and it makes me sad that um, it didn't do well in theaters because I mean, even the crit, a lot of the critics even enjoyed the movie. It just nobody went and watched it. Uh, unfortunately, I think it could be down to like the the saturation of the franchise. People yeah. have just been burned too many times with the Terminator film. Yep, and maybe they just got bored of it. Um, yep. I, I mean, I'm, I'm the same. I, I didn't, I didn't watch it in the, uh, in the, in the cinema. Mm -hmm. I, I waited until it, until it came um, on, onto a streaming service. Um, so this next question actually comes from my, uh, my partner in this YouTube, uh, on the YouTube channel, Sneaky D, uh, my editor, and his question for you is: uh, On IMDb, you were in a movie called The Mercy, and your credit was dock worker. So I'm curious, were you just on the set and they were like, hey, can you just stand in the background for us? Well, I mean, I, I was working on the film, um, mm -hmm. but I, I actually, because they were filming uh, randomly quite near to where I live, mm -hmm. um, which is a long way away from where I actually work. <laughs> so uh, so I, I basically had to go to the other end of the country to then find out that I had to drive back down to pretty much my home. <laughs> Yeah. to then go to work and as 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 we turned up there um we were we were told to get into costume mm -hmm. which i i found very odd and i was like i think there's been a bit of miscommunication here because mm -hmm. uh we're, we're special effects mm -hmm. they're like yeah 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 get into costume so, okay <laughs> so, 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 so we did mm -hmm. uh it, it turns out we we were actually there for for an effect on that day which i wasn't aware of at the time um we, we were supposed to do on camera uh, angle grinding, mm -hmm. uh, and it and it turns out that um, the other other te well the senior technician I was with, um, he wasn't right for the part if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it's a film based in the in the uh, 60s, mm -hmm. um, and he's of Asian descent, so they ah. they were saying that he would not be. Mm -hmm. uh, factually accurate for for the right. time period yeah, so yeah. I, so so I, I i was gonna do it on my own really he didn't take any offense to it at all he was like no that's brilliant <laughs> it's like <Yeah>. great <laughs> so yeah. um so yeah i i i had to uh do the effect myself however hair and makeup then said to me that they uh they said okay we we need to cut your hair and uh we we need to shave your beard well, it was oh not really a beard but you know it's like yeah, but yeah. um but and I just said no, <laughs> and and yeah. and then I, I guess they wanted to pull out their trump card. It's like, well, if you don't, then you can't be in the movie. It's like I don't care. I don't want to be in the movie. 
<laughs> it's not my choice. Yeah. You want me to be in the movie. Yeah. So, so, uh, so they, they they basically covered my face with uh, mm. with a welding mask because mm. uh, initially um, it was meant to be on on camera welding. So we we mm. brought like welding equipment down and stuff like that. Um, but the director decided to go with angle grinding. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've ever welded before, mm-hmm. but welding absolutely fine with with a welding mask because you've got like mm-hmm. the arc uh so, so uh but basically it's, it's like um a very dark lens that mm-hmm. when when you when you uh strike up your weld uh you you'll get an incredibly bright light uh which mm-hmm. is called your arc mm-hmm. and if you look at that you you will blind yourself really uh, yeah well i mean if you looked at it long enough definitely it's, yeah. it's almost like staring at the sun yeah um, but you would you would wear a mask Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's specifically set up that it will it is so dark, but when you see the light, you can see the mm-hmm. the. Um... However, when you're doing that with angle grinding, it doesn't work. You can't mm. see. <laughs> uh... So I was we- wearing this mask, and uh, the uh, the first assistant director, um, she called out to me. She, she knew me by name because I'd, I'd done a film with her previously. Mm-hmm. So she asked me, uh, that, "Leon, why why have you? Uh, is, is there a problem? You know, is there anything?" So I'm. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't see. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, well, take the mask off then. So, so, so I just took the mask off. As I turned around, I, I, I'm it completely by accident. I caught, caught the eye of like the, the hair and makeup department just mm-hmm. looking. They were fuming looking at me. I was like, sort of gave them a smile like, no. <laughs> and then just went back to it and did my angle grinding without the mask on. So it's yeah. Like, but, yeah, it's, it, it was just, it, it became a safety issue, really. I, I, I yeah. couldn't see what I was doing. <laughs> right, right. Huh, that's very interesting. That yeah, that's that's definitely a more interesting story than I was expecting. I thought you were just gonna say they were they were just like, Hey, can you be an extra in this scene? I'm I'm not even sure if I'm if I made the cut for the movie because uh, Oh really? Uh, no, I, well I, I didn't watch it, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I might have to I might give it a watch and, and see. Although I, the movie when did that movie come out? It's like uh, uh two thousand eighteen, I think. Oh, okay. So okay, yeah. So, so I, I might I, I might watch it and see if I can pick you out back there. Okay, well, the, it will be on a dock, and uh, and there'll be people working on the dock, and I'll be the guy angle grinding as Colin Firth walks past me. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah, I might that, check that's that all. Out. That's all I remember about it. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, this next question also comes from uh, Sneaky D, and uh, his question is: In 2013, Bolton University wrote an article about you, and they asked you what it was uh, what it was like getting offered Game of Thrones, and you said it was surreal because the job came out of nowhere. But I'm curious, uh, with you working on many big projects since then, is it still surreal when you get offered these types of jobs? Um, I, w- I wouldn't say it's surreal anymore. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the job I have, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always interested in what what I'm going to be doing effects-wise. But uh, the, the content itself, um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's cool if it's something I've heard of, um, sure. But I, I think the novelty tends to wear off after a little while. You know, it's, yeah. I, yeah. I, I get excited when I go into work, um, mm-hmm. but it, it's, it's usually because it's, it's a job I enjoy because mm-hmm. it is different every day. Yeah. So you, you're never going to be doing the same thing every day. It's, it's just yeah. the nature of the job, um, and I think that's why I, why I do enjoy it. So yeah, yeah in, in regards to surrealism, mm, not not in the content, but. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if you're asked to do something like, well, for instance, set 23 people on fire, yeah, it gets a little bit surreal then. And it's yeah, like, wow, well, this yeah. is my job. And it's like, so sure. Yeah. Yes and no, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotcha. So obviously when you're on these sets, you, I would imagine sometimes you're around some of the big name celebrities that are in the movies and TV shows. How often do you get to kind of meet these celebrities and talk to them and interact with them? Is I mean, is it, is it pretty common for you to interact with them or does it just depend on, on the scene? You don't tend to really interact with the stars mm-hmm. unless it's necessary. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got to look at it this way. Um, they're there to do a job yep. and you're there to do a job. Right. You know, it, it's like we're 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 at work, mm-hmm. so it's it's the same as anything. That that they mm-hmm. they could be doing all things. They could be getting into mm-hmm. character. They could anything, and it's like, and mm-hmm. they don't want you going over there and bothering them. Yeah. Of, of course, uh, I've I've had actors sit down uh, next to me at lunch before and mm-hmm. s- strike up a conversation. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, of course, I'm I'm going to interact and and after work mm-hmm. as well. If you, if you see them outside of work, say say for mm-hmm. instance, if you're if you're on location somewhere. Nine times out of ten, you will you will see the actors, mm-hmm. and um and yeah, 
I, I, I wouldn't barge my way in and, and start yeah. like, like forcing myself upon them. Right. But, um, right. but if I had to, if I, if, if, if I had to explain an effect or something like that, or something we were going to be doing in the interest of safety, mm-hmm. absolutely. But um, you, you don't tend to uh, have a lot of downtime to to really hang out with mm-hmm. uh, with yeah. uh, actors or, or or really anybody. Yeah, that makes sense. But I'm sure you have had a few opportunities where you've gotten to maybe hang out with with some of them and some of the projects you've worked on. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, I, I, I had gr- great ones in the past. Like, um, yeah. uh, oh, I don't know if I can say it, but <laughs> um, uh, snuck off when when I was on on a particular film. Uh, snuck off with one of the actors to watch uh, a World Cup um, match. Mm-hmm. That was going on because because the World Cup was on at the time when we were yeah. when we were filming this particular yeah. film, and uh, he was a football fan. I was a football fan, yeah. so we, we snuck away to watch the film. I was getting radio calls saying, "Where are you?" I could hear uh, <laughs> the director calling out and, and, and yeah. the ads calling out for the actor. But we yeah. were watching quite a big match, so we just kept quiet and just watched the nice. as much as we could and just kept sneaking <laughs> back. That's funny. That's funny. Well, that, that was fun. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. Uh, so let's uh, let's change gears just a little bit and talk about the Game Chasers movie, because um, obviously you worked on that recently, and and I met, and that's where I met you on the set of the Game Chasers movie, and uh, we had some good times in that few days that I was there. But uh, what is your history with the Game Chasers, and what led to you uh, wanting to work on the movie? Uh, well, I I found the Game Chasers uh, back back in. 2013 on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, mean I, I just got back from a, a long job away. Uh, I, was, I was away for a, quite a few months, mm-hmm. so um, I, I, th- I think I just ba- basically got home, uh, jumped on YouTube, and saw a promoted uh, promoted episode. Which mm-hmm. I think, if if I remember rightly, I think it was the Flintstones Dinosaur Peak one because I, mm-hmm. I remember it, it was it was getting like big promotion. I'm sure it was, mm-hmm. um, and then. I, I binged the whole lot for for a, mm. a number of days. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was it was a great show. I mean, uh, mm. that the, they really tapped into something that that people wanted to see, and mm-hmm. obviously Billy and Jay themselves. That the, the, you you met them on set. They are mm. as they are in the show. That they're, they're, exactly. they're just these crazy guys that that love video games and mm-hmm. that you know that fun to be around. But I I randomly went on Twitter. Um, which I, I never really used, um, mm-hmm. well, not not too much. Um, and I saw Billy was looking for onset crew, um, so I, I sent him a message. Mm-hmm. Um, and I told him what I, what I do and uh, if, if he if he would need anything from me. Uh, to be honest, I didn't expect a reply, <laughs> mm-hmm. but um, no, we, we ended up talking. Billy got into contact, and uh, and he decided to have me out there on the film. So yeah, I, nice. I, I came out. Nice. All right, so did you enjoy the experience? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it it was a great experience. I mean, mm-hmm. it was it was such a close knit crew. Um, yeah. It I I found that because obviously normally I'm used to working with very very large crews. Right. Uh, th- th- this was quite a small crew because obviously yeah. the, the, their budget uh, was was very small for for yeah. for what what was achieved was just amazing yeah. for for, oh, yeah. for the. Uh, the, the amount of money that was put into the project. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, you've you've got people out there that are, that are saying like that, what whatever their budget was 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 mm-hmm. a lot of money, and it's it really yeah. isn't in no. the film industry. Um, Not at all. But the, but the creativity that just came out was just fantastic, and mm-hmm. uh, and and to see that on set, mm-hmm. you know, it, it it was definitely good fun. I'm I'm glad I'm glad I went out, and I'm glad I did it. Yeah. Um, so kind of piggyback off that. Uh, so as part of that project, you were in Texas for, for quite a while during the movie. Uh, what was your experience of Texas and did you enjoy the food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I was out there for about a month. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, di- I didn't get a massive amount of downtime, but uh, I did get to explore the area uh, mm-hmm. a little. Um, however, Texas is is massive. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, Texas is bigger than my country, like three mm-hmm. times over. <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, the the area I was in was pretty isolated too, um, mm. un- unless I Ubered. Uh, I'd, I mean, I, I was going to drive out there, but um, the other side of the road's a bit of a problem for yeah. uh, for me. <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought I'd best not to. I, I, I had a bit of an issue in Croatia the year before, uh, not realizing they drive on the other side of the road as well. And I was just happily driving early hours of the morning until a car was coming straight towards me. I was, I was so it's like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I... I, I I was a bit wary. I, I did mm-hmm. actually get my permit to drive out there, but I thought, 
uh, I'm, I'm going to stick to Ubers. And uh, yeah. yeah, so so I, I, but I didn't have too much time off. Uh, we we were on set quite a bit. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, the food was was fantastic. We mm-hmm. we, we don't have anywhere near as much choice as you guys uh, mm-hmm. you guys have out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. So I I definitely over overindulged. Yeah. Um, I put some weight on, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I had headaches at one point. Um, it, it, it turns out it, uh, it was probably the cans of soda. Probably, uh, yeah. That, well, they they have um, high fructose corn syrup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's banned in the UK. So we, <laughs> that that was like yeah. giving crack to somebody. It was like, oh my yeah, god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, but no, I, I, I definitely enjoyed the food. I mean, that barbecue place that uh, that, that we went to that that, oh. that was that was something else. Yes, that it was. was. That, that was, was like a that was like a, a transcendent experience. That food was that barbecue place. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, for for somebody from the UK, uh, mm-hmm. barbecue is is something which people dabble in here mm-hmm. and there, but they crap at it. Yeah. So <laughs> so it's like yeah, coming yeah. out there and actually experiencing proper barbecue. Yeah. Was uh, was something else. It, it was it was yeah. really good. And it doesn't get much more proper barbecue than Texas. Texas is like the king of barbecue in the United States almost. So you saw a lot of scenes being filmed uh, during the Game Chasers movie because you were on set. Uh, I think you were on set almost every day, weren't you? Uh, Not every day, but most days. Yeah, Yeah, most days. So uh, with your experience in the movie industry and all the movie sets you've worked on combined with what you saw on the set of the Game Chasers, uh, do you feel like the Game Chasers movie is going to be good? I know I do, based on what little bit I saw on, in the four days that I was on set. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, for, for one thing, as, as I touched on previously, it was it was amazing to see the, the creativity achieved yeah. on such a small budget. Yeah. I mean, I mean um, the de- departments usually will have everything you know mm-hmm. you, you 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 want for nothing on a movie set mm-hmm. whereas here it was it, you had to be uh, a bit more particular about what what you, you could actually achieve with mm-hmm. what you had and uh but ev- everybody worked their asses off i mean the, oh yeah they, the, i was i was impressed with uh with with the way it was was all filmed and all ran mm-hmm. out there every every department was so professional it was great mm-hmm. um I mean, I, I had to make bud- budgetary sacrifices myself in regards to equipment I wanted to use because mm-hmm. normally I, I would have a machine uh, that, that I know works. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I've, I've used it for years and stuff like that, but it, it, it would cost a few thousand dollars to rent for the week. Yeah, wow. Well, okay. um, yeah. So we, we had to do some thinking outside the box. Um, mm-hmm. I, I did some research and I, I managed to... Um, Basically, uh, I, I was I was quite proud of of, mm-hmm. of how I managed to get get mm-hmm. what what we achieved with special effects on a budget. Yeah, um, it, it 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 was it was good fun. It was good practice yeah. to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, actually looking forward to the movie coming out. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's it's one I'll be watching. That's for sure, definitely. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to. It. Are, are you going to be able to make it to the uh, premiere? I hope so. I hope I'm yeah. allowed in your country. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> that's it. at the see. moment, I'm not allowed in. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Hopefully, hopefully that will change at some point. But yeah, but, but, but yeah, you're right. But but yeah, you're right, man. Uh, even just the four days I was on set, I was blown away just by the the camaraderie and and how well everybody worked together. It was like a well oiled machine on set. Everybody knew their part. They did their part very effectively and very efficiently. Um, and as a result, they were able to get that entire movie filmed in just a couple of weeks, which is just, I mean, that's oh, just insane. Yeah, it, it was, it was fantastic. Uh, how, how much was managed to pile in to, mm-hmm. I think it was 17 days. Yeah. It's, it, it was just, I mean, obviously we were, we were filming 12 hours, which yeah. in, in the UK we, we normally do, I think, I think you guys refer to it as French hours, which is 10 hour days, mm-hmm. uh, but, but we don't take like an hour lunch break, but, yeah. um, but it, it definitely needed those 12 hours and oh, yeah. every, everybody worked r- r- like fingers to the bone and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it was, it was definitely cool. But yeah, yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited for the movie and um, to everybody watching, I think you can still support the movie on Indiegogo uh, if I remember correctly. So I'll leave a link to the, uh, to the Indiegogo page in the description down below in case you want to still support the movie and pre-order the Blu-ray or, or a digital copy or however you want to support it. So be sure and check that out. And if and there is a trailer out there as well, kind of a teaser trailer, if you want to check that out also, I highly recommend it. Um, so, uh, Leon, just out of curiosity, 
What did you do before you were working special effects? And also, where do you see your career taking you in the future? Oh, um, well, I, th I think one of my earliest jobs was uh, I was I started working in a uh, a video rental store, hmm. um, like back back in my my late teens, um, and I, I did that for a, for a couple of years, and then then I sort of I, I branched out a bit. <laughs> I, I I worked in um, in a couple of cinemas, <laughs> yeah. so I sort of sort of did the the steady evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, worked in a couple of cinemas for a number of years, and then um, yeah, I, I guess it's always kind of been around movies. Mm -hmm. Working in a video shop, working in a cinema, uh, go make the films. Why not? <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. So where do you see uh, where do you see your career taking you in the future? How do you like? Do you have any goals or anything like that with your with your career? Um. No, I mean, I mean, I, I'm I'm grateful for the job that I have, mm -hmm. um, and I, I just hope to keep on doing it as long as I can. Really, um, I'd I'd love to come out uh, again uh, to to the states and work. Uh, mm -hmm. ho hopefully, that may happen in the future. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, other, other than that, I'm just happy to to keep on working away. So the fact that you uh, the fact that you wanted to work on the Game Chasers movie would suggest that you're a pretty big gamer, and obviously you're, the background right now. I see that amazing uh, Sega Master System collection. <laughs> so uh, can you uh, can you kind of walk us through a, a brief history of you as a gamer, and and you know how kind of how your how you progressed as a gamer from childhood to now? Just a brief history. Uh, well, I, I've I've always been into games ever, ever since I discovered them. Really. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, back back in the day, I had a Spectrum uh, 48K. Oh wow! Uh, and my older brother had a Commodore 64, which I he, he had to put a lock on his door eventually because because I used to sneak in his room and I, I would play New Zealand Story, Rainbow mm -hmm. Islands, Wonder Boy, like all, all the arcade ports that ended up on on the Commodore. And yeah. uh, I, d I didn't care. The graphics were crappy. I mean. Yeah. Um, and you had classics on there like Dizzy, and uh, mm -hmm. there, there was another cool one which mo most people probably won't even know called Trolley Wally, which is very weird. It's a mm -hmm. it's a game you're basically a a pumpkin, yeah. uh, and you're going around uh, the, this this one uh, this one room, but it's like all sorts of traps and escalators yeah. and stuff like that to get shopping items, yeah, uh, and then take them down to the 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 uh, the clerk. And it's it's a very odd odd game, but the the music is um the song popcorn, you know. Oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah that, that song. Yeah. And it's it, it's it's an addictive song, and I, yeah. I I don't know whether I just um I I I loved the song that much that I I wanted to play the game, or I just played yeah. the game and ended up loving the song. But yeah, that 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 was great. Um, and from then I I, I got my Sega Mass system, mm. which um. We, the, Nintendo wasn't really that big in in right. in, uh, in the UK or, or, right. or I guess power regions. Yeah. Uh, Sega Sega was a big impact, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean I've I've got Wonder Boy tattoos on my mm -hmm. arm. I've I've got Alex Kidd on my arm. You know I've, mm -hmm. I've I, I I'm a big fan of Sega. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that was definitely a big part on my on my, uh, on my gaming gaming career. <laughs> <laughs> So, what is your favorite gaming console? I would imagine it's probably a Sega console, but but which one is it? See, that's that's getting tough these days because mm -hmm. uh, I I would always say um, well, Mass System because mm -hmm. um, I've I've not got uh, I, I'm not one of these guys that gets every single game. I, mm -hmm. I I I get every single game that I think I would play. Right. So I've got maybe half of the Mass System library. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily, not. Uh, <laughs> I, I've I've got a couple which are getting up there now. Um, mm -hmm. But but they're they're good games like you know like your Buggy Run and your Power mm -hmm. Strike Two, which I don't believe came out in America. Probably. But, not. Um, but yeah. Um, but these days I've been uh, collecting for the Mega Drive. Uh, obviously, you guys call it the uh, the Genesis. Um, but but the the Mega Drive I I've got now probably a bigger collection than my Master System collection. And then I started to branch out to the Japanese games mm -hmm. and the, and the Genesis exclusives as well. Mm -hmm. And I, there's so much on there that I just didn't oh, yeah. realize was was that there's just so many games that either we got that you didn't get or mm -hmm. or you got that we didn't get, which which mm -hmm. is usually the case. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's there's some fantastic games that just people 
still don't talk about to this day because the, the, there's mm-hmm. just so many games out there that people do talk about uh, mm-hmm. and they're popular. Uh, finding a hidden gem is, is mm-hmm. difficult these days, but <laughs> you still yeah, turn yeah. them up on the Genesis. Still turn them up. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed about uh, Sega consoles in general is just Sega consoles in general are just packed full of hidden gems, I've noticed. Once I start digging into the library, I find a game that I've never heard of before, never heard anybody talking about before, not even online, very rarely, and it turns out to be an amazing game. I see mm. that a lot with Sega consoles. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do I'm you, uh, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's 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 not just all Sonic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. There, there are more games out there than Sonic yep. the Hedgehog. Yeah, man. There's a lot of fantastic games that exclusively came to Sega consoles and didn't hit any a Nintendo console or anything else as well. Yeah, and even some uh, some ports. Uh, well, not 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 ports, but obviously when when they would come out on the different consoles, so you'd get one on Super Nintendo and you get mm-hmm. one on uh, on your Mega Drive Genesis. Yeah. Uh, for instance, Aladdin. The Mega yep. Drive version is far superior. The same with the Lion King. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's a bit of a Disney vibe there, but um, but I, I play the Super Nintendo versions, and they they pale in comparison. So you know, so, yeah. so some, sometimes you just wouldn't have known that back as a kid. It's like yeah. oh, I've I've got that on on this console. Well, I've got it on this console. Yeah, you know? but you exactly. you wouldn't know. I mean, the internet yeah. wasn't uh, like prevalent around then, so. Yeah. <laughs> do you uh do you ever see yourself possibly collecting for more of the CD based Sega systems like the Dreamcast, Sega CD, Sega Saturn? No, um, I <clears throat> I didn't really know those consoles. Uh, mm-hmm. I I'd, I'd kind of got out of the gaming scene when the uh, the tail end of the Saturn mm-hmm. because I, I was I was into my my PlayStation One absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I borrowed a Saturn off of a friend of mine. I, I wasn't impressed. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, in, in Power Territories, we, we we got a terrible selection of games. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that that probably didn't help. Uh, yeah. l- looking now and seeing that the that some of the Japanese shooters and stuff like that they got mm-hmm. were fantastic, but they, they just mm-hmm. weren't ported over. Um, and Dreamcast, I, again, I I was I think I was more interested in girls at that point. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> um, right. I mean, I I did get back into gaming briefly with um. Uh, I, I dabbled in PS2 for a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and I, I picked up an Xbox, picked mm-hmm. up a GameCube, but mm-hmm. but I really didn't get back into gaming again, really, uh, until the Xbox 360. Yeah, like properly back into gaming, uh, which was yeah. a good ten years. So I had a good ten year break. Yeah, yeah, something similar. I took kind of a similar course where, you know, I kind of took up several years where I would still play games, but I wasn't as heavily into gaming as I was whenever I was younger. And then all of a sudden now, now I'm, oh, well, obviously super heavy into gaming by mm. what you see behind me and the fact that I have a gaming YouTube channel. So, um, I think that happens to a lot of people, a lot of people like us, you, you start off as a kid loving games something, and then eventually something happens. You don't play many games for maybe several years. And then you, you, one day you're just like, you know what? I want to get back into gaming. And what's cool about it, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, uh, when you get back into gaming, you find, and especially if you collect games like we do, you find that there's just so much discovery that happens as you start getting into collecting. You discover so many games you never played or never heard of that end up being amazing games. And it's just, I don't know, it's a fun journey. The, I, I agree with that uh, to an extent, but mm-hmm. usually... I tend to go, uh, I gravitate towards games that I either saw as a kid, saw somebody else playing as a kid, yeah. uh, and and couldn't afford myself, right. or, or at, at, uh, the rare opportunity I actually owned that game in particular. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll gravitate towards th- those sort of games. Mm-hmm. But when when I uh, when I see something interesting, like um, mm-hmm. when when I really started to go hardcore into collecting, uh, mm-hmm. I would go on to, I think it's Virtual Library or stuff like that, mm-hmm. where, where it has every single game uh, for every system um, in on on YouTube, mm-hmm. so it's like thousands of games, and just look through them all. And I would make a list of what I needed. Yeah. And I I think now uh, I've I've got quite small lists for the consoles that I have left yeah. remaining because I've I've yeah. I've got quite a lot now. Nice. So before we get into the Florida Man segment, which I'm really looking forward to, do you have anything else you want to say to the audience? Anything else about yourself you want to share? Just anything at all? Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm dabbling into, uh, do it, doing 
doing something on YouTube uh, upcoming. Mm. Um, hopefully with a with a mutual friend Yoshi. Nice. Um, we, we we will be we'll be doing something. Uh, I, I can't really elaborate on what at the mm-hmm. moment, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to that when we get that off the ground. Nice. Well, you'll have to keep me updated on that so that I can, uh, whenever you get it get it out there, I can share it with my audience so that they can go check it out as well. Sure, that'd be good. Yeah, definitely. All right, man. You ready to get into the Florida Man segment? Because you don't know what to expect here, do you? I, I have no idea what this is, no. <laughs> and see, the fact that you're not from the United States makes this even better because you're not familiar with the Florida Man phenomenon. All right, so Leon, let me explain the Florida Man phenomenon. So you are familiar with the state Florida in the United States, I would assume, right? I, I wasn't aware it was a state, but yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's um you know it's kind of uh you know you got Tennessee, then you got Georgia. Right below Georgia, you have Florida, and Florida is a state that's I think it's considered a peninsula because it it's got ocean surrounding all three sides of it, except the northern border is is touched by land. Mm. Um. And Florida is a state with just crazy weather. The weather is all over the place. It's a very tourist heavy, very tourist heavy state. Uh, there's a lot of tourist attractions in Florida, you know, like um, Universal Studios Orlando, for example, or uh, Disney World. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of big, big tourist areas in Florida. But another unique thing about Florida is something that I call the Florida Man phenomenon. For some reason, in Florida, some of the craziest news articles come out of Florida. Some of the most insane stuff you've ever heard in your life. And it's always a man in Florida doing something crazy. So the title of the news article is always Florida man. And then what the Florida man does. So, (laughs) (laughs) and Leon, you just, you don't understand how crazy some of this is, man. So we're going to, so I've picked out five Florida man articles that I'm going to read to you, and we're going to talk about each one and have a laugh about them. And and after this, you'll know what Florida Man is, and and you'll you may even go online and start searching some Florida Man articles out because anytime you need a laugh, just search Florida Man, dude, and you'll find something funny. So uh, I'm going to share my screen and let me know when you can see it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. So the first article, <laughs> the first article is titled. Florida man arrested after asking deputies for booze and ice cream. Since the man wasn't in distress and or in need of medical attention, deputies placed him under arrest for misuse of 911. <laughs> so, wow. let's get, yeah. So let's let's get into this article. So, a uh, Punta Gorda man, I assume that's the town in Florida, called 911 multiple times and asked the deputies to deliver him ice cream and liquor, according to Charlotte County deputies. <laughs> <laughs> Last Saturday, deputies responded to a Punta Gorda apartment after Michael James Gable, 65 years old, called 911 to report emergency. When deputies arrived at Gable's apartment, he asked them to take a $20 bill that was on the couch and return to his place with some liquor. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> deputies told Gables that needing a liquor delivery was wasn't an emergency and if he called again they would that he would be charged with misuse of 911. Gables told ep- deputies that he understood. The next day, Gables made another emergency call to 911 operators who dispatched deputies to his apartment according to the sheriff's office. This time, Gables asked the deputies to, deputies to take his ice cream out of the freezer since he wasn't able to get out of his recliner. <laughs> since Gables wasn't in distress or in need of medical attention, deputies placed him under arrest for the misuse of 911. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, man. So, wow. So just imagine, man, you, you get a call. You're, you're a police officer. You get a call to somebody's apartment. You get there thinking there's some emergency going on. You knock on the door and some crazy guy opens the door and says, hey, officer, I got a $20 bill on the couch. Will you take that and go get me some liquor? Or, hey, officer, I can't get out of my damn recliner and I want some ice cream. Can you go get some ice cream out of the freezer for me? <laughs> what would be going through your head to, to call the, oh, the emergency services to request something like that? that that's, that's just odd. Very odd indeed, and I I don't have an answer to that except that I think honestly I think the reason why we get so many of these crazy th- stories that come out of Florida is I think Florida makes people crazy. I think between the weather and all the tourists, 
I think Florida makes people crazy, but who knows? So that, <laughs> so yeah, so there's article number one. And that one was, you know, that one wasn't too crazy, right? Uh, but it gets worse. So let's move on to uh, article number two. <laughs> okay. okay. Article number two is titled, Florida man tried to escape cops by stripping naked. Ribeyes fell out of his pants. <laughs> so like ribeyes like steaks. Like steaks. Yep. What the hell? <laughs> so this was in Daytona Beach, Florida. A shoplifting suspect trying to get away from a grocery store stripped naked and steaks tumbled out of his pants, police said. Police say they found Stefan Short, 28 years old, of Veland, Florida, running out of the store in the buff when he refused to stop. Article sh uh, officers shot him with a taser. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Did it yeah. cook the steaks? <laughs> oh, just wait. Just Get wait. a medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it cooked something. You'll, you'll see. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, the incident occurred Friday night at, a, at the Save-A-Lot in Dillon, police said. Officers were sent to the store and were told Short was being pinned to the ground by a manager and a civilian. But he was fighting them, the police report said. Witnesses reported the police reported to police that in, a, in an attempt to get away, Short wriggled out of his clothes. Police said Short stole four packs of ribeye steaks valued at $41.24. That's awfully specific. Uh, Short was charged with resisting an officer without violence, uh, resisting a store employee while committing a theft and first-degree petty theft. He was held without bail Monday at the Volusia County Branch Jail. An officer arriving at the store saw coupon books and packs of meat scattered on the store's floor and a naked short running, the report says. Now, wait till you see, wait till you hear the uh, how it all ended. Uh, the manager reported that Short was a regular shoplifter at the store and that when other shoppers reported they saw him stuffing meat in his pants, the manager stopped him, investigators said. Short was taken to a hospital after it was discovered that a taser prong struck him in the genitals. <laughs> yeah. So this dude, this dude goes into a store and he starts shoving steaks down his pants, freaking ribeye steaks. And somebody catches him in the act and they tr chase him as he's being chased and try and they're trying to pin him down. He wriggles out of his clothes. There's steaks falling out of his pants all over the floor. They're whole, he's naked. They're holding him down to the ground. The police get there. He's resisting arrest. They hit him with a taser right in the ball sack. <laughs> I, I can't say I've ever been hit with uh, with that much electricity, but I, it's definitely going to hurt. <laughs> oh, dude, I can't even imagine being tased in the nuts. No. Screw that. But you know what? He deserved it. Because uh, it, 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 I don't understand why he was... What what makes a person think that it's a good idea to shove raw meat in their pants in an attempt to steal it? I mean, I don't, I just don't understand. What, what do they call that out there? Is that is that a police vasectomy or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, but uh, but that's a lot of meat that was around his meat, and then he mm -hmm. got his other meat tased. So he, uh, I bet he regretted that. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So the next one. Florida man wakes up to find another man sucking on his toes. That is horrific. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a movie right there. Uh, the man thought he was being robbed, but the intruder was there for something much different. In Bradenton, Florida, a Florida man woke up in the middle of the night to find another man sucking on his toes, according to the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. Deputies say the man was sleeping in his bed in Bradenton, when he woke up and realized he wasn't alone. The man told deputies he assumed he was being robbed, so he told the intruder he didn't have any money. But money wasn't what he was there for. <laughs> the intruder told the man he was there to suck on his toes, according to the investigation write-up. Uh, that's when the man punched the accused toe sucker and forced him outside, according to investigators. While the two brawled, the man who sucked the toes told the other man he had a gun and tried to fondle him, according to investigators. God. The man continued to hit the intruder for about 30 seconds before running inside and calling 911, deputy said. At this point, the intruder broke out the front window of the home and stomped on the other man's car windshield until it broke, deputy said. Investigators said the toe-sucking man took off, 
So they tried to track him with a canine, but they were unable to find him. So Leon. So he's still so, at large. He's still at large. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere in Florida is a man who wants to break into another man's house so that he can suck on another man's toes. Wow. That's uh, yeah. definitely something to aspire to. Go Florida. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so I want you to remember these articles, though. If you ever uh, film a movie in Florida, <laughs> I want you to remember these Florida Man articles. I, I don't think I ever want to visit Florida in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not done yet. We've got two more articles. Mostly naked Florida man accused of spreading feces during school break-in. <laughs> mm. This is a weird one, dude. This is a weird one. Suspect claims he was high on laced marijuana, deputies said. Uh, this was in Seminole County, Florida. A man was naked from the waist down when he broke into an elementary school, spreading feces in the process, according to the Seminole County Sheriff's Office. Deputy said a school resource officer at Bear Lake Elementary School noticed signs of a break-in on August 26th. Surveillance video showed a man later identified as 25-year-old Christian Dominic Shea jumping a fence on the property at around 2.10 a.m. Thank goodness this wasn't during school hours. Mm. Uh, deputies say they found cake frosting on drawers, desks, and chairs in a classroom. There were frosting footprints across the floor as well, records show. The open cake container was found in the classroom's trash along with a child's sweatshirt that was covered in frosting and feces, according to the affidavit. <laughs> Handprints and footprints of fecal matter were found at the window ledge in the classroom where Shea broke in, authorities say. A stapler was found in a toilet, and a TV remote that was covered in feces and frosting was located in the bathroom as well, according to the report. <laughs> Oh, my God. Deputies said a laptop worth $559 was found in a trash can outside of the school and was soiled and soiled man's underwear was found hanging from a building. <laughs> <laughs> Shea was on campus until about 4.30 a.m. record show. Record show. Uh, during the investigation, deputies said employees at the school recognized Shea as being involved in previous incidents. Shea was located Friday at his home in Apopka. He told deputies that he was the man in the surveillance vid video and he believes he committed the crime because he smoked a marijuana blunt that had been laced with an unknown substance, according to the report. He was arrested on charges of bur burglary, property damage, petty theft, and indecent exposure. Wow. Wow. I've just noticed the number of times that it mentions where the feces is. Surely you, you have a f finite supply of, of your own... <laughs> Of your own feces. <laughs> How much could one man produce to be able to put around that much? That's crazy. Did he bring so, some home? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> yeah, really, for real. So I have a theory about this one, about this particular incident. I, you know, I kind of believe the guy that his marijuana was laced with something because nobody in their right mind that's not a complete psychopath or having just a chaotic mental breakdown is going to do something like that. So I bet his marijuana was laced with some kind of powerful hallucinogenic, like maybe LSD or, or something else. Who knows? Because you got to be on some hard drugs to do something like that. And maybe that's why, that, maybe that's why so much shit was coming out of the guy and spreading everywhere. I don't know, man, but, but I have one question. No, two questions. What's up with the cake frosting <laughs> and why was there a stapler and a remote covered in shit in one of the bathroom toilets of the school? Yeah, that's that, that's kind of I don't know. Maybe he was trying to MacGyver him, himself something up, or I don't... Oh, man. <laughs> that uh, I, I, out of the five articles that we're going through today, I think that one is probably the most bizarre and disgusting. And I feel sorry for whoever had to clean up the mess, dude. Could you imagine the school janitor? Could you imagine the school janitor comes to work the next day and he has to clean up shit and cake frosting just all over the place? I'd quit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'd be like, nope, you got to draw the line somewhere. I'm out. Let one of the kids clean it up. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So let's move on to the uh, the final Florida Man article. Uh, Florida Man threatens neighbors with nunchucks and bug spray, but only injures his, himself. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, a Florida man welding nunchucks and bug spray tried to quiet a group of noisy neighbors, spraying them and threatening to open fire on the revelers. 
But the only person he ended up injuring in the crazed quest for quiet was himself, officials say. Larry Adams, 61 years old, was arrested after the bizarre confrontation, which residents said was sparked by loud music coming from a car outside a Daytona Beach apartment complex late Monday night. Uh, one neighbor told the station Adams initially tried to frighten the group, but the bid backfired literally when he struck the car frame with the nunchucks and the martial arts weapon unexpectedly bounced off the vehicle's body and smashed into his face. <laughs> uh, that was funny, somebody says. Somebody's saying this. That was funny. I was like, this man really just hit himself with the nunchucks. And there's a picture of the guy with where he got hit with the nunchucks. You can see the damage and where it swole on his head and the blood and stuff. So that had to have hurt, I would imagine. Um, Adams also allegedly, uh, Adams allegedly also threatened to shoot the group and doused them with roach spray, according to the station. Officers responded to the scene after Adams and his neighbors called police on each other. When cops arrived, they noted Adams had a cut on his forehead and a subsequent check of his home revealed a nunchuck an empty can of roach spray, and a box containing a loaded semi-automatic handgun magazine. Uh, citing the arrest affidavit, uh, it was not clear if Adams owned a gun or had one in his dwelling. Adams was booked into a Volusia County jail on charges of aggravated battery and assault, according to the station. The manager of the apartment complex told Fox 35 Adams is set to be evicted. Well, duh. <laughs> you would definitely evict somebody after they did something like that. So imagine, Leon, you're having some fun with some friends of yours. Maybe you're being a little loud. And some crazy guy comes running at you with a can of roach spray and swinging some nunchucks around, dude. What would your reaction be to that? Ah, uh, well, I'd, I'd be, I'd be horrified, uh, but I, I would never get in that situation myself. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm far, far too, uh, far too relaxed and British. Uh, I'm, I'm an introvert. I stay in, I don't, yeah. I don't go to parties, but, yeah, um, no, I, I think the, uh, the, it, it's, it's more seeing the whole, the fact that he has a gun. Mm -hmm. I, I, I keep forgetting obviously that, uh, that you, your, your gun it, yeah. Your gun laws are very relaxed in yeah. in, in your country. Or, yeah. Well, in, in respect to mine. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's scary that uh, people can just get access to something like that in in a particular state of mind, which is it sounds clearly crazed. Yeah. Well, it sounds like they they never confirmed if he had a gun, just that they found a bunch of ammunition. But I'm sure he probably had a gun in there somewhere, and he probably got the gun illegally. A lot of people that. Um, in the United States, a lot of people that can't get guns, maybe because of they have a record or they they're mentally um, not able to have guns. Uh, typically, these people can still get them illegally. I mean, just like anywhere else in the world, you can always get guns illegally. So, but, uh, but <laughs> you come come to the UK, all you get is drive by arguments. <laughs> <laughs> drive by arguments. <laughs> But what I think is hilarious is the fact that he freaking hit somebody's car with a nunchuck and it bounced up and hit him in the head. <laughs> it's impressive, definitely. Uh, oh, man. Impressive that, stupidity. Yeah, this, this <laughs> to be honest with you, this whole article sounds like a scene in a comedy movie or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something which, it, it just it's just bizarre. It's too mm -hmm. bizarre. It, it, it sounds fake. It's it's yep. like it's, it's like you're reading from the Onion or something. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, and that's what's crazy about these Florida man articles, man. These Florida man articles, they sound fake, and I'm sure there's probably a few of them out there that are fake. But um, the majority of these Florida man articles come from local news websites in Florida, mm -hmm. reported by local news in the area. Uh, there's actually a website, I think it's just FloridaMan.com, that that finds all these articles from these local news sites and compiles them on their website. And that's where I found these from. Um, but yeah, so that's the Florida man phenomenon, Leon. And there are literally thousands of insane articles like these five you just saw today out there. I don't know. I don't know why and what what's up with Florida and why this happens so much in Florida, but this is a very common thing that happens in Florida. <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, it's not, not somewhere that's now top of my list to visit. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I can tell you, I've been to Florida several times um, on vacation whenever I was a kid because my grandfather used to live down there. And uh, to be honest with you, you're not missing much. I mean, the beaches are pretty nice. But the thing about Florida is the weather is so erratic. 
it, I kid you not, Leon, in Florida, it will literally be, literally, literally be cl clear and sunny. And then all of a sudden, a massive thunderstorm rolls through out of nowhere, just out of nowhere. Um, and it's also very humid in Florida. So, yeah, I mean, it's hmm. unless you unless you want to go visit Disney World or Universal Studios, I, I can't really recommend Florida. So but uh, but yeah. So what <laughs> what do you what do you think of uh, Florida, man? Yeah, uh, it's crazy, Cra yeah. crazy that these things are actually news and, and yep. people are actually doing this out there. Um, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I have no words. I have no words. Well, you just learned something new about Murica. So I'm glad I was able to uh, introduce you to the Florida man phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 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 avoid Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. All right, Leon. So that brings us uh, pretty much to the end of the podcast, man. Is there anything else you want to say before we uh, close out? Is there anything you want to plug? Any projects you're working on you want to plug or or maybe even your Twitch, if you're still doing that, anything you want to bring up before we close out? Uh, no, I, I mean, obviously, I, I've, I've talked briefly about um, that, that particular project that me and Yoshi may be, mm -hmm. uh, may be doing. Um, but other than that, so that gets off the ground, uh, no, I'm, I'm just being me uh, and, and just keeping to myself at home. I, I've, I've been off Twitch a little while lately, um, mm -hmm. just every man and his dogs on Twitch at the moment because obviously yeah. of the lockdown, um, yeah, right. which, which isn't what it's all about, but you know, yeah. it, it, it does get a little bit disheartening being on for yeah. three hours and nobody being there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm still um, playing games. I'm still playing yeah. my games. So. Awesome, man. Well, uh, I will have to, uh, I would love to have you again on another YouTube video doing a, uh, collaboration like we did with the Sega Genesis, uh, hidden gems video. So, um, if I come up with a good idea and, and you're interested, I'll let you know. Uh, but thank you, Leon, for being the first guest on the first episode of the uh, Retro Wolf cast. Um, I appreciate you, man. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what movies and shows you're going to be working on in the future once this stupid virus dies down. And uh, look forward to seeing what kind of project you, you've got going with, uh, with Yoshi. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. So, all right, man. <laughs> Take it easy. I appreciate it. Cool. You too, man. Catch you later. Bye-bye.